السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm very known that I do not prepare for speaking because I can't do that. I don't know why, but I leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when I stand up here and talk, I want you to understand that I'm honored to be here, wallahi. And that's not to humble myself or any way that to show that, but I'm really honored to be here to serve the cause of hugs for many reasons. I am the honored one who be called here to be talking to you for the importance of hugs in our life. And from the first day I learned about hugs, I believe that hugs are supposed to be all over the world, everywhere. Because they are the true soldiers, as they call them, the foot soldiers. And forgive me for mentioning word soldiers, but that's the reality. They are the one who's on the ground that helping and doing all that hard work to support the family. Inshallah, I'm gonna share a story with you because I'm not a scholar. Inshallah, we will talk about the ajr of sadaqa, the greatness of sadaqa. But I will share a story about something very important that we did not practice it really as a Muslim ummah, as a nation, for a long time, which is unity. Unity is the most important thing in any nation. What does it mean to be united? What does it mean to be together? And that's, inshallah, my story to you, to you today. It's during my time in Guantanamo, which is in the early years, 2002, 2003, you know, it was the most hardship time, starvation, cold, all kind of torture, I mean, mentally and physically, that, wallahi, I don't want to bother you, and I don't want to make a sad night, but it's beyond beliefs. And it's hard, hard to talk to anybody. Imagine that the next man to you, between you and him, is just a fence, because we were in cages. You cannot even talk to him. I mean, that's mentally and it makes you crazy because you know as soon you open your mouth, you will be harmed. You will be taken out. But we learned a lot because when I saw that situation, and please do not think I'm trying to say that about myself, but wallahi, Allah blessed me that I traveled the world. I lived in America. I lived in Europe. I lived everywhere. I spoke English since I was a young kid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I worked with the American army, by the way, just to let you know. So I knew who, the, who are these people. I know how they think and, how to, and everything I saw there is against what they believe, against to what everybody think about the American human rights and all kind of freedom and all that. And I was shocked how they can treat us like this. So I, I couldn't take it. And we used to look down, actually. We cannot even look at them because as soon you rise, you're... You raise your eyes, they will tell you, look down. It was truly shocking. And I was thinking, why? I mean, we didn't do anything. So we have to come up with something to get together. But how can you get together while you can't even talk to the person next to you? How can you breach? How can you talk? But, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us by doing the first hunger strike which opened the way for us to unite. Why? Because we knew that when we unite, definitely they will come down and talk to us. From not even looking at the guard to speaking to generals. By the way, it's a big jump. I mean, we can't even believe it. And that's why I want to tell you the story about what does it mean to unite? We used to be in this metal cages. And one day I was thinking, what, what can I do, you know? We have to do something, you know? We have to do something to make them talk to us, you know, treat us like human beings, give us what we need without begging for it. So I talked to some of the brothers in my block, around 45 people, different citizenship, different nationalities and all that. I said, we're going to do something. I want to do an experiment. And inshallah, it will work. Because not everybody can hunger a strike. 
some old people, some guys, they can't, you know, stay hungry. So I said, inshallah, we will unite to do one thing only. They said, what? I said, no talking. What do you mean? He said, well, I said, no talking. You do not talk. From the time I, we start, you're not going to talk. You just keep your mouth shut. If they ask you, do not answer. If they tell you anything, do not talk to them. If they don't give you food, do not ask for it. If they give it to you, take it. But do not ask for it. Alhamdulillah, we agreed. So morning came, the day start. Guards, as usual, coming around. You want your food? Nobody answer. At that time, you cannot get nothing without asking. Not even toilet paper. Nothing. Not water. You have to show the guard you need him. And this is a very important thing, by the way. Think about it a little bit. I don't want to go higher and higher, but think about it. Because this is one of the ways for anyone to show that I control you. You have to ask him for things. So nobody talked. The cart, the food cart passed by. Food, food, food. You want food? Nobody talked. Food cart went back again. Time finished now. Toilet paper. You want toilet paper? You want toilet paper? Nothing. Water. Water, water, nobody talked. The guard straight away called the higher command and they called the colonel and they called the general and probably they called Washington DC. Hey, what's going on here? This block is not talking. They send, you know, they start from the small low rank, the sergeant goes up. So they send me the sergeant thinking I'm the leader as usual. Yeah, why are you not talking? Sitting on my bunk bed, whatever, that metal bed. Why you are not talking? Talk to us. If you have a problem, just let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Now talking. I want to cut it short. First day. Second day. Third day. They didn't ask you want food. They opened the bean hole. We call it the bean hole. Beans. Open the bean hole. They put the food. Everybody like, yes. People getting hungry. They grab the food. I told him, do not talk, you know. They ate everything, throw the trash out. After the food, straight away, they start giving toilet paper. Actually, extra than the normal. <laughs> Putting it in the fence. Everybody's happy. After that, the water came. Hey, water, guys, water. Putting the water in. Everybody felt like, wow, man. Five, six, seven, eight days. Things improved. Guards is very respectful. Everybody's talking nice. Come on, guys, some guys come and all that. Hey, come on, please, guys. It didn't work. Because nobody have the same, except, you know, if I say today, the end, the end. So I get a colonel, big rank, coming in the early morning. Early morning, everybody sleep. He comes from the front. Hey, please, you know, 239, that's my number. 14 years I've been called 239. Yo, 239, you want to talk to me? I looked at him and I see the big ranking there, but... He goes around, 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 15, 20 minutes, nonstop. And then he comes to me acting smart. Oh, I understand. He goes from the back. He goes, you don't want anybody to see you talking to me. You want to talk to me? <laughs> I was like, what a stupid fool, you know? <laughs> because reality, they think, okay, you know, it's a big privilege, you know, you're talking to a high-ranking guy, a colonel. Anyway, he stayed for half an hour, couldn't do it. He left. And everybody wondering what's wrong with this block. But they saw the difference. The food became more. Everything became more. No more struggling with toilet paper, with water and all that. Definitely there was a weak link, but I didn't want to mention that. There is people who couldn't carry on, which is a normal with the system. They have to find somebody who is weak. So three, four people, they went back again to normal. But alhamdulillah, the rest, because we have to expect things like that. That when you stand up, there is people they cannot stand up. But it doesn't mean that you sit down. Because we all know shaitan is going to come and whisper to you. Hey, you know, why are you giving yourself this hard time? Don't worry about it, you know. Somebody else will do it. And that's always going to be the case. As the brother just mentioned. Even with the giving. 
You know, don't worry, Akhi, your money is not going to make a difference. You know, don't give it. You know, somebody else will give it. No. We are not that kind. We Muslims, we're supposed to compete to go ahead, to go forward, to do the best we can. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he told us to ask for Jannah, he didn't say ask Jannah. He said, if you ask Allah for Jannah, ask for Firdaus. إذا سألتم الله الجنة فاسألوه الفردوس Ask for Firdaus. We know Firdaus for who? For the highest of the highest of the Nabiyyin, Siddiqin, Shuhada, وحسن أولئك رفيقة. Yet, Rasulullah give us that he said, do not ask for something little. So, Alhamdulillah, after 10 days, without talking, our life completely changed. Changed. From respect, wallahi, the minute I spoke to the guard, when I told him tomorrow is the last day, just to let you know, to put a smile, the guards who were giving the breakfast, when he came to me, he goes, oh, good morning, 239, breakfast. I said, yeah, yeah, no problem. The guys, they start, the, the guards start dancing on the, <laughs> they couldn't believe it. They left the breakfast, they left everything, and they ran to inform the higher command that these people are talking. And then they came down and they talked to me, why you are not talking, what happened? And I told him, this is what we need, you know? And alhamdulillah, they comply with everything. And this is just for us to be quiet, just because we united together not to talk to them, which is a very effective. And that's the importance of unity. Don't look at the action itself. Because this is one of the ways of shaitan, how he defeat the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes he shows you that it's a very small action. Come on, man, what's wrong with you? Why? Why you want to sign a paper? A signature. A signature is so important in this country. And alhamdulillah, you know the petition, that because of that petition, it was the first step towards my release after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is they start looking at my case in the whatever the house of parliament 200,000 I used to hear about this and I was wondering when I was there in my cell I said subhanallah there is almost four or five million Muslims they're struggling to get 200,000 signature I mean for me it was like how come why why people they just sign their names well, how hard for them that but the reason why, because of that feeling, the sense of unity, that we have to get together. We have to take that hard step, the first step that, no, I'm going to do it. I got to do it. Even if I feel like it's not going to do nothing. But at least you are one of the group. You are one of a lot of people. Not alone. They have a very famous Arabic saying. They said, al maut ma'al jama'a rahma. Dying with a group is a blessing. Which is the worst thing can happen is death. But yet, if you die with a group, it's a blessing. Why? Because it's, it, it should give you the sound of, of the unity is how important it is, even in a hardship, even if dying. And this is why I ask everybody that we have to unite. We have to. I mean, I'm not talking about everybody today, let's go and do some kind of group. Or, no. In your heart, in your, in your mind, talk to yourself about, I have to unite with this ummah. I have to attach myself to the ummah, any way you can, any way you can, because what happened to me can happen to you. And I wish nobody harm, but wallahi, it can. And that's why we have to prepare for that day. I have to know there is, there is an establishment that if something happened to me, inshallah, my family, someone will take care of my family. I'll tell you another story, a small one, inshallah, and I hope time will help me. Sad a little bit, but it's funny in the end because I knew about hugs. Alhamdulillah, I received some news about my family has been supported. One day they sent me someone to tell me how much my family is suffering. They want to break me down. I've been isolated most of my life in Guantanamo. I was mean alone, nobody around me. So this guy came to me and he said, you know, and I'm not saying that to expose myself because my story is very famous, but alhamdulillah, 
May Allah reward my wife and my kids. He came to me and he said, you know, my, your wife is crazy. I said, no, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, your wife is crazy in the hospital. She's running around. I said, where you get that from? Are you talking about Guantanamo now? He said, oh, it's in all over the, the news and the media and internet. I said, subhanallah, is that true? So, you know, for me, it's a way of interrogation. You know, they want to break you down. They want you to ask, please give me a phone call. Oh, okay, you want a phone call? Okay, you have to talk to us. And then he says, you know, there is something happened with your wife in the hospital. I said, yeah, what happened? He goes, your wife, she was running around the hospital, knocking on the doors, opening the doors. And she goes, oh, Shakir, Shakir. First of all, my wife never called me Shakir. <laughs> Till today. Because <laughs> I'm very known with Sawad. So he goes, she opened the doors and she called Shakir, Shakir. And I start laughing. And the guy looked at me and he says, uh, man, you have no feelings. I said, why? He said, your wife gone crazy. She's running around the crazy hospital and you're smiling, laughing. Why are you laughing, man? He said, well, it's very strange. You know why? He said, why? I said, even though my wife is crazy, yet she's very polite. She knocked doors before she entered. <laughs> <laughs> he said, are you serious? I said, yeah. I mean, she's knocking the door. She's crazy and she's knocking doors. Mashallah, she's a very polite woman. <laughs> they knew. They knew it's not going to affect me. But alhamdulillah, for almost 14 years, not 13 years, by the way, I spent 14 years there. Because most of the time, they count the time in Guantanamo. But I was locked up before Guantanamo in Afghanistan. Not to brag about it, but information so when they know when they cannot get you they have to try any way they can they try to scare you they try to stop you and then they try to intimidate you or they try to actually butter you try to give you extra things they try but they will always gonna try and you have to prepare yourself for that that when you want to do the good and forbid the bad this is the case we are living this right now in this country that forbidding good and ordering the bad, not among Muslims, no, among everybody. Because this is, this is the beautiful deen, the religion, that themselves, wallahi, they talk about that the most charitable deen, the most money get collected every year is by the Muslims. They are the most giving people. And that's why we have to think where is our money have to go? And that's why I advise all of you, female and male, female, if you follow the opinion that you have to pay the zakah for your money, alhamdulillah, I asked people who's very knowledgeable, yes, you can give your zakah to hugs. Yes, you can give it, inshallah. And I asked them also to tell everybody that they know they got businesses, they got, you know, Zakah, they got sadaqah, is to give it to hugs. Why? Because we need more hugs. We need it, wallahi, in the whole country, first of all. And that's why we shouldn't depend on gathering like this to collect money. It should be an income, that non-stop income, that coming from the zakah, from the sadaqah. The first thing a man wish or a woman wish when they go to their graveyard he wished to come back to do that, to give sadaqah. Your sadaqah is the cloud that is going to protect you from the heat on the judgment day. Your sadaqah is your companion after death. It's a very important thing to do. And I don't claim I'm doing it, but wallahi, we have to. We have really have to talk about sadaqah to each other. We have to encourage each other. We have to make one day the day will come when hugs when you tell him to give him money, he says, No, man, we don't have we don't need it anymore. It's too much. Because really, 14 years, wallahi, they helped my family for 14 years. Even after I came back, I didn't know they were carrying helping. With the school fee, with food, with so many things. 
One day I was with my wife and she's, she got a card. I said, what's this? She said, oh, this is uh, for the food and all that. I said, why are you paying from this card? Oh, she said, this is Hugs card. I said, what are you talking about, Hugs card? She said, oh, this is Hugs. They give us this card. They put 500 pounds in it. And you can do shopping and all that. I said, Khalas, I'm here. You don't need it anymore. And I told her, call Hugs and tell him, Jazakum Allah khair. Do not put money in this card anymore. And alhamdulillah, she did. So they do help with money. They help by visiting the house, by talking to my wife, my kids, by sometimes going to the school if the kids have problem. But all that, we know they need money for that. They need to recruit people. Yes, there is volunteers, but not all the time. There is people who wants to do full-time hugs, but they still they have to make a living. They need to get paid. And that's why we need to help them and we need to do the, the best we can today to give money and also, inshallah, to talk to everybody you know, to the families, to bring awareness to all the Muslim ummah. What's the importance of hugs? Because I've seen a lot of people, they don't know nothing about hugs. But we need to promote hugs and we need to talk about it to everybody, inshallah. And may Allah reward you all, jami'an, inshallah. And may Allah bless you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah, inshallah, will never let you need hugs again, ever. But if hugs need us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to help hugs. Because in the end of the day, wallahi, we are helping ourselves. Wallahi, we are the one who's going to get that benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are the one who's going to benefit from everything that we do to help others. So inshallah, I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow me to do whatever I can to help hugs. And in the same time, may Allah accept it and accept all your deeds. Jazakum Allah khair. And forgive me if I said anything that didn't please anybody or upset anybody. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.